The big banks are facing big competition from fintech. That's at least the view of Jamie Dimon. In his letter to shareholders, he wrote, banks are playing an increasingly small role in the financial system. Fintech leaders like Square, PayPal, and Visa have easily outperformed traditional banks like J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Citi over the past three years. Joining us right now are Rebecca Felton, senior market strategist at Riverfront Investment Group, also Dan Primack, business editor at Axios. Rebecca and Dan, it, it was a fascinating letter to read and to see him so explicitly call out uh, the fintechs, but also the regulatory regime, which he believes has allowed them to thrive in a way that he hasn't. What did you think of that, Rebecca? Well, thank you so much for having me this morning. And and certainly you can't disagree with what he said. It, it, it is an unfair playing field, if you will, because these companies don't have to have bank charters. They don't have to go through the regulatory hoops that we as financial institutions do. But to say that the fintechs are the, the only competitive threat, perhaps we ourselves as an industry are a competitive threat to ourselves, because there have been studies shown that just as late as three years ago, 50 uh, percent or more of, of financial institutions didn't have a fintech strategy in place. So it, it's more than just the fintech uh, problem. It's, it's looking inside ourselves and, and being less cumbersome. Dan, is, is, is it that the banks are not innovative enough or is it that the banks can't be innovative because regulators have told them they can't be innovative? I think it's probably more of the former, and I'm sure Jamie Dimon in particular would object to that because J.P. Morgan certainly has been, the, you know, as far as Wall Street goes, has been pretty good when it comes to tech innovation. The, the thing I didn't quite get out of Jamie's letter was what specifically he wants done about it, because on the one hand, he complains that the fintechs aren't being regulated like the banks are. On the other hand, in other spots, he kind of wants the banks to be a bit less regulated. So, so I didn't see specific things he wanted in there when it came to fintech. When you think, though, of the successes of the visas, of the PayPals, of the squares, do you think that there is real risk embedded in those businesses that's not being accounted for today, Rebecca? Well, I think that is hard to say. The the speed of the growth, the speed of, or the growth of the demand, the tipping point that we saw because of COVID and, and the now uh, reliance of consumers and small businesses on these platforms, I think that that is going to be something that will determine over the years to come. Dan, you look at a, an Ant Financial, you look at some of these big businesses. Do you think there's ever a possibility that they become so big that they end up buying a bank? Or, or is the regulatory regime of the banking system unto itself so unattractive that you would never do that? I think it's probably the latter, right? I, I, I don't. I just don't see them wanting. You know, not that they could. Not that they would necessarily be able to afford a J.P. Morgan, but I just don't think they would want the headache of it. You know, most of these fintechs, you know, kind of they, they grow up as startups. They're kind of used to being able to be not completely unregulated. They are still financial services companies, but but to have the really strong hand of government. I think the thing this really shows, though, is we're ten years plus since Dodd Frank, and so many of these businesses we're talking about either didn't exist at all at that time or were just starting out. Re really, the current financial regulatory framework is already antiquated. I think when Jamie says that, that part's true. So, Rebecca, if you're Dan Shulman running a, a firm like PayPal, does, does a letter like Jamie Dimon scare the heck out of you? Because all of a sudden there's going to be a new conversation uh, about regulation uh, in this space? Well, as slow as any government body moves, I would think it wouldn't scare him so much in the near term. And probably it would be comforting to know that the status as disruptor is, is, is a good one and is growing. So um, I don't know that I would be as concerned about it as, as pleased with the success. Dan, what did you make of the, the other thing that, that struck me about that letter was the inclusion of Apple and Walmart in his competitor set? To some He's degree. Right. I mean, he talks I mean, about Walmart being a competitor set to Silicon Valley, but then he effectively says that Silicon Valley is a competitor set to him. He's right. And he's right. He's he's absolutely right. Uh, look, I mean, when you think of Walmart, when you think of Apple, right, you can use you can use your iPhone now to pay for things, not by connecting it necessarily to a credit card or to a bank, just by connecting it via Apple's own financial services. Uh, you know, take a, take a company and it's not in the U.S., but take a company like Grab, right? Grab, which starts as the Southeastern ride hail company, basically an Uber of Singapore, its financial services piece is now arguably bigger than its ride hail piece. So, so tech companies have, have figured out quickly how to move into fintech, and Jamie's kind of acknowledging right. that. Well, Dan, Dan and Rebecca, but uh, let me go to Dan first on this. Decentralized banking, what they call DeFi in the business, 
Do you think that that is the future? And what, what does I, it actually say if, if it is uh, about, about a, a business like J.P. Morgan? I'm not sold it's the future. I think it is part of the future. I, I do think when it comes to banking, the, there is still a value to a decentralization it, as simple as literally having somebody to yell at when things go badly. Uh, so I, I think it's probably part of the future. I, I'm not sold that it is the future. Rebecca, you, you buying some of these coins being used in the DeFi world? No, not not yet. Um, I think that the transaction costs are still going to be a, a problem. If you go to Starbucks and buy a four dollar cup of coffee and have to pay fifteen twenty dollars for that transaction, I think that that's going to be eye opening and perhaps prohibitive in the near term. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.